possibility of more lightning caused fires should have people living in rural areas really thinking about defensible space and kxy 4s jeff humphrey joins us now live from our sky deck with more on that jeff nadine about 30 years ago a fire chief in lake tahoe he did something that really caused a stir down there he got a bunch of rocks painted them red and green and he put the green rocks in front of the driveways of the homes that he thought that he could save in the event of a wildfire he put red rocks in front of the homes that he didn't think he could save and that got Lake Tahoe very busy working on its defensible space program now Spokane County trying to catch up as well. Here in Kevin Dixon's backyard, this sprinkler stands ready to wet down this 30 foot barrier all summer long. He's kept his natural vegetation green so it can snuff out an advancing wildfire like a cold salad. It's called a green space, a broad border of grass, flowers, and even leafy vegetables designed to keep a wildfire from reaching Kevin Dixon's home. I have also installed additional watering over the, the side here so that I have a 100-foot buffer zone uh, for protective space, and many of the neighbors have also done the same thing. And after looking at the damage done to home after home in places like Pateros, pulling your brush clearing resources with your neighbors may be the way to go. Think block watch, but for fires. It's not, he's not just an island of green here. Um, the community as a whole has joined with him and together they're, they have made this a, a, a firewise community. It's defensible space around every home. That includes limbing up the ladder fuels that can carry fire into the treetops and thinning out overgrown vegetation. Flames need fuel to move around and now's the time to cut down the brush that gives fires their mobility. It really is important um, for people to understand that they're going to be on their own for the most part and their first line of defense is the defensible space around their house. It looks like that if nobody came to help you, you're in a position to help yourself. That's correct. You can hardly blame Mr. Dixon for wanting to live here on the edge of beautiful Latah Creek, but even the Massachusetts native knows that this canyon has been periodically burning for thousands of years, and it's not a matter of if it will burn again, but only when. Reporting in Spokane, Jeff Humphrey, KXY4. And Nadine, we are back up here on the fire deck, and as we saw in central Washington this week, when you have those big project fires, there are simply not enough fire engines to go around. What you do right now in the way of pre preparing your yard for the advance of a wildfire could make a big difference in whether or not that fire chief decides he's going to give you a structure protection rig or send it down the road to somebody who has already taken the time to do that. We have established a link for you on our website. I'll take you right to the Spokane Conservation District they have a program called FireWise, and they'll actually come out to your Spokane County home, inspect your property, tell you what needs to be done. In some cases, they've actually got large groups of neighborhoods together, and they pulled their money into the removal. There are even some grants available. So it's not a matter of when. It, it, it's not a matter of if your area is going to burn. It, it's, this area has been burning for thousands of years. It's going to happen sooner or later. Take the time to prepare so you don't lose your home and you can get through a firestorm with the best results. Switching back to reporting on our storm, it appears that these winds have claimed their first life here in Spokane. Highway 2 in Big Meadows Road, that's where a gentleman who lives up there just called me and said that a tree has fallen over somebody who was driving by and that person did not survive their injuries. Another very dangerous turn of events when the winds blow like this, as you mentioned, are those power lines. And Avista has actually schooled up reporters on how to behave when down power lines are in the area. And one of the scariest things they told us was that when power lines go down in the alleys, for example, they'll hit a chain link fence and you can be on the front of the house, not even anywhere near a down power line, but they energize that chain link fence line. And you could just be opening the gate to go up there and interview somebody about what's happened to their home or what it's like to be out electricity and be electrocuted. So give electricity the respect it deserves. Leave it to the professionals. Just stay away from down power lines and be mindful of things that can conduct the down power lines electricity to wherever you are. That includes metal and that includes water. Nadine. All right. One more reason, actually two more of those down power lines and trees not to be out on the road when these active storms are moving through. All right. Thank you so much, Jeff, for that.